Hello, I'm back in my studio sharing some of my year's art projects with you and I thought today I'd get to my antique ledger. This ledger has been a joy from the time that I found it at an antique mall in Asheville, North Carolina and let out a squeak when I saw it because not only was it there but the price was right. This ledger turned out to be what I call my miracle ledger because it doesn't seem to buckle under to anything I throw at it, art-wise. It is a canvas-bound, uh, leather-edged ledger, and the only, really, the only thing I can say about this is that for some reason, this paper from the very early 1900s seems to be made of something miraculous because all of the art that I have thrown at this, as you will see, has not warped the paper. It has not gone through to the other side. It's mind-boggling. I don't know whether some of the writing in this is done in uh, an old iron-based ink of the time or a uh, pencil makes no difference. The art just happens in this ledger. This piece I have stacked up quite a few layers of collage. I have used uh, acrylic paint in the background stencil. I have used my uh, Sigma Uniball pen and despite the fact that this is a rather heavy, uh, this flower is a rather heavy piece of paper, you'll notice nothing on the other side. And I thought that it would probably give at some point, and it has not. What a lucky find this one was. On this one, here I have rather large pieces of collage from my very favorite uh, flower book. And I've used my uh, glue stick, which has not caused any problem on this side or this one. And as you can see, this was done back in April and nothing has happened here. I used some gouache around the background and then I drew more leaves. I drew in my uh, more fritillary uh, to finish out these two. So this is a uh, pencil, uh, ink pen, and watercolor. And I really am rather tickled with myself, I must say, uh, because I did kind of get these two flowers to work well with this one. I must have been holding my mouth right that day. Here is the back side of that piece of paper. Unbelievable. Wouldn't it be nice if paper was like that nowadays? Here is another example, this time using pieces of collage from my paint waste book. I just tore up these sheets as I had them and saw them and collaged them down here. 
all of these main pieces are from this Thurber, my Thurber book. The outside is, again, a little bit more gouache. And then I applied, I can feel that I have applied um, uh, crayon to that. And the same result. I don't know why, for the life of me, that I keep expecting a different result with the same process. I wonder if that might also work as a um, definition of craziness. Now on this one, I really went to the limit with my uh, water-soluble oil crayons and this large piece of collage and here, here, and here. This and this and this are all uh, penciled on, uh, inked in, and boy did I lay on a thick layer and rub in, and I thought, well, maybe this will do it. Rubbing in to blend that uh, nice oily uh, crayon. Let me get one out to show you. I'll be right back. I did really believe that these portfolios might be the sticking point in this ledger because, as you can see, I really laid on layers and rubbed and rubbed in each of these areas and nothing. Let me see what this is. Maybe, maybe right there my first inkling of rub-in, but certainly not anything that I would complain about. I really, really, really took a chance on this one, and it worked a treat. Another piece, this time, again, using a uh, my large... Uh, collaged flowers from my go-to flower book. But I also wanted to test the waters again about how much, how many layers I could add on top of the, uh, whether it was pencil or uh, faded ink, I didn't, don't know, but this was another experiment in terror and it turned out to, uh, work very, very nicely. I used my ink tense pencils here and I worked over them as you've probably, if you are one of my subscribers or have seen me work before, you know that I often uh, spread that uh, ink tense pencil. Instead of using just plain water, I add a bit of gesso to it to get this more opaque effect that we see around here, around this gray area to back up to punch out this white flower so that it would not get lost. A very, very large area of stenciling, I'm sorry, of collaging, quite a lot of stenciling, and here again, uh, these are stencils that I just use the outline of a stencil in, with pencil and I painted in this area, but in this case, again, I used my Derwent Inktense pencils, uh, but I used less gesso and more water to uh, get this effect here rather than this this type of an effect. So, depth from the ink tense pencil. I can tell that it is not my um, water soluble um, pastels because it does not have an uh, a waxy feel here at all. I 
I wanted to try abstract on this page, and I have to say that I turned out to be quite tickled with the result uh, on this spread. Collage, painting, finger painting the edges of the collage to push them back, uh, stencils, and more stencils. And I have to say that the more I look at this, I guess because I do like blue um, and oops, this, two kinds of uh, collage. This is a, uh, a tissue, a tissue paper. This is magazine paper. And this one is napkin. And this napkin is so nice and flat because it is applied with a um, glue stick, a tip to remember. If you're interested in having the a napkin or any very fine paper applied without rippling, glue stick is the go-to. And this shows that time does not help, does not let it yield itself or pull itself up off the paper. I like this one, if I do say so myself. Here is my girl. Again, I'm getting very liberal with knowing now I'm really convinced that I uh, can do about anything I choose to on, these, uh, antique, on this antique paper. So we have a girl, we have some uh, collage bits that I cut into all of these various shapes and then I uh, drew in uh, a, a swath of flowers. All of this background is uh, applied liberally without worrying about water content because here again it works. And my last Christmas one my Christmas magnolias. This one, again, a large from my go-to flower book, a large magnolia, and I added, I drew in the leaves, used, um, colored them, I used ink tense pencil, and then I wasn't quite happy with the depth, and I didn't, for some reason, decided not to apply acrylic to bring out the strength because any of you who have been up close and personal with a magnolia leaf know that they feel like leather. I wanted them to feel heavy and bulky. So I went out and got my ink tense blocks and applied some more paint with that. And then a light, a light covering of um, stencil to bring out um, some depth of color. This was also quite an experimental background because first I slathered on uh, gouache to give the color on the background. And then I decided that it was kind of insipid. So I got my uh, Winsor Newton iridescent medium for watercolor. And I put that on top of it. And then that was round two and round three was some of these white snowflake effects. And that was done in a combination of white gesso um, uh, magnolia white paint and a very, very pale pink paint. Experimenting, experimenting, and learning. And many pages left. Much more fun to be had in this book. I was tickled when I did find this book that it is, uh, it is pretty well used. It's, it's not just a few pages in this one. So I am looking forward to doing some more uh, playing in my antique ledger journal. And I hope that uh, you will consider joining me. If you have enjoyed seeing this visit with the miracle paper from the early 1900s, well, it could have been, uh, the paper could have been from the late 1800s too, for all that I know. Please give me a thumbs up. Share with a friend, leave a comment, and I would certainly appreciate 
you subscribing to my channel and joining me next year when we I have more uh, experiments in my ledger. Bye now.